Here's the solution to homework set number 7 for ECE 341. This homework covers uniform and exponential distributions. Now the first problem is suppose A has a uniform distribution over the range of 0 to 3. B has a uniform distribution over the range of 0 to 4. Find the PDF for A plus B. Well, in this case, you're going to use moment generating functions, i.e. Laplace transforms. The height of this has to be one third for the area to be one. This height has to be one fourth for the area to, to be one. So the Laplace transform is one third times one over s times one minus e to the minus three x. So I'm going to take the derivative, I get a delta function right here, integrate, I get this part, and then take the derivative, I get a negative delta, that's the minus, delayed by three seconds. Likewise for b. The beauty of uh, Laplace transforms is you don't have to convolve, you just multiply. So multiply these two puppies together, and I get 1 12th s squared, multiply out all the terms, and take the inverse Laplace transform. So this is uh, 1 12th t, 1 12th x, whatever the x axis is, uh, delay 0 seconds, delay 3 seconds, delay 4 seconds, delay 7 seconds. So there's your answer. Or another way to write it, it's 0 for x less than 0. Uh, this one kicks in between 0 and 3. These two kick in between 3 and 4. Uh, 4 to 7, and then onward. Problem 2 is repeat using convolution. So what I can do is just have time go 0 to 10 seconds. My step size, that's your dt, is 0.01. Uh, let's see. Then a is 1 third for time bigger than 0, less than 3. b is 1 fourth for time greater than 0 and less than 4. Of course, since t starts at 0, I could just say t less than 4. Then y is the convolution integral. So that will be the integral of, yeah, so it's lowercase, a of t b of tau minus t dt. Um, so when you do that, um, it would be the convolution of a and b. I've got to multiply by dt, since I'm doing integration, to get the right answer. And you know, getting the dimensions right, eventually when you plot t versus y, it looks exactly the same. And again, the area here has to be 1. And you can check that by say, what is the sum of x times dt? That's the integral. Width times height. There's the width. That's the height. That's the width of all these rectangles. That's got to be 1. Problem 3. Suppose I have this circuit and the resistors have 5% tolerance. Find the mean and standard deviation for y. So here we're going to use the Monte Carlo simulation. The equation is the first stage is an inverting amplifier, gain is minus R2 over R1. Second stage is an inverting amplifier, gain is minus R4 over R3. So y, since x is 2 volts, is just 2 R2 times R4 divided by R1 times I3. In Monte Carlo, what I can do is pick a random number for R1, that's 1,000 ohms nominal, plus or minus 5%. So that right there is plus or minus 5%. 2,000 ohms plus or minus 5%, so on. Calculate Y, save all the values. Then when you're done, find the mean and standard deviation. So ideally, Y should be 12 volts, but actually it's going to have our favorite distribution one more time, this bell-shaped curve. The mean, at least when I did it, is 12.04, and the standard deviation is 0.69. And you should get answers fairly similar. As a sidelight, I didn't ask you to do this, but if you plot the CDF, getting about 1,000 points, so the probability goes from 1 to 1,000 divided by 1,000, and I sort the data, 
plot the sorted Y versus its rank. That gives you the CDF. So 20% of the voltages are less than 11.6, 50% are less than 12, 80% are less than about 12.7. There's your CDF. The challenge is come up with a probability distribution function that has that CDF. We'll get to that when we cover Weibull distributions. Number four looks at exponential distributions. So d is an exponential with the mean of 6, so that this says this decays as e to the minus 6t correction. Erase. Draw. e to the minus t over 6. And to make the area 1, I've got to divide by 6. e is a distribution that decays as e to the minus t over 10. To make the area 1, I've got to divide by a tenth. What happens if I pick a random number from D, add it to a random number from E? What's the PDF look like? Well, that's convolution. Take the two time responses, or PDFs, and convolve them. In MATLAB, uh, the mean is 1 sixth, 1 tenth of a second. I just went out to 100 seconds, just to make sure. Well, it'll never go to zero. Uh, but i got to stop somewhere. So at 100, it's close to zero. It'll be a little bit wrong, but as long as I go far enough out, it's not too far off. Calculate D, E, just for fun, F. Convolve D and E, and that's X. That's problem number four. And it got carried away. This is problem number five, so ignore that for now. But plot T versus X, and setting the dimensions to match up, so the same size, X is the same size as T, Here's what it looks like. That's the sum of d plus e, the PDF for it. With Laplace transforms, I can do the same thing. Here's the Laplace transform for d. Here's Laplace transform for e, or in statistics, it's called the moment generating function for d, moment generating function for e. It's Laplace transform. This isn't in my table, so take a partial fraction expansion. Again, cover up the 1 6th term, plug in s equals minus 1 6th, I get minus 0.125, minus 0.25. For the other term, using the cover up method, I cover up the 1 10th term, plug in s is minus 1 10th, I get plus 0.25. So there's the partial fraction expansion. That one I like. I know what this one is. This is minus 0.25 e to the minus 6t, plus 0.25 e to the minus t over 10. Um, and if you check at 10 seconds, that's 0 0.04475. Go back over here at 10 seconds, you get the same answer. Problem 5 then is what happens when it can involve three exponential distributions? Well, in MATLAB, that's not a problem. Just can involve D and E to get X. Convolve x with f to get y, and you're done. Repeat using Laplace transforms. So here is Laplace transform of d, there's e, there's f. Again, use partial fractions. Cover up this term, analyze it s equals minus 1 sixth, I get 1 quarter. Likewise for the other two terms. Take the inverse Laplace transform, and there's y of t. And as a check, if I plug in 10 seconds, I get 0.02. If I go up somewhere, I guess I didn't plot it. Well, if you plot it, I'll get the same answer. So that's homework set number seven for ECE 341.